got a trip. We're back. We're doing it. Yeah, see, I'm loud. I don't think you're that loud. We're doing shit. Um, Yeah, shit, man. We're in winter. Yeah. Still. Yeah. Still snowing in the Gunnison County. Yeah. Saw some posts on Facebook the other day. I was like, hey, I'm heading up to the Lake Fork, you know, to go check it out. And it's like, uh, uh, (laughs) you know, if it gets cold enough it's gonna suck even more um, just because yeah. it's cold yeah. but i mean the river could drop it the won't... gunnison dropped like 900 cfs right the gunnison will drop but the san juans the way they're unleashing it's uh, the lake forks toast i mean i'm not saying you can't go down there and catch fish but i last time i checked it was 600 and rising i haven't checked i didn't check this morning yeah but there's a lot i mean did even like even the gunny like it it's just been so cold, man. Like, right. It's just brutal to go out and fish. Dude, it's windy. Oh, uh, yeah. It's, it's bringing on flurries. And uh, we're, I mean, the high country is supposed to get two feet of snow almost. Right. Right. I mean, you had six inches of snow at your house. Yeah, last two days we got six. I had three this morning out of here. It's <clears throat> melted, but it's still like, right. hey, it's cold enough that the rivers aren't dropping enough. Like, everyone's got this idea like, oh, man, the rivers are going to drop. They're going to be good. Nope. It's not going to happen. No, dude. it's still spring. It's dropping. Yeah, right. it's fishable. Right. It's fishable. It's floatable. Right. It's not walk exactly. really. Exactly. It's floatable, and you might be able to pick out some holes where you can dunk some worms and catch some fish, right. but it's just not – It's man, we're, like, we just keep talking about it because this is big water year, but we're just sitting in limbo. <clears throat> right. Will it please just unleash – finally so we can get our runoff and then get past it it needs to it's i mean i I was up at taylor reservoir the other day man and like taylor reservoir is low as hell oh really oh yeah dude and like you look into the high country around there like oh shit right there is so much snow to come down dude like they're gonna unleash this they're running I think I looked at it i did look at four plus no it's five plus now okay i think it's like i think it was a I'm sure I'll get corrected. Right. Well, I don't know. People don't. We haven't looked at it today, guys. I think it was like almost over 560 out of the dam right now. <laughs> right. And it's like, I mean, it's running, you know, but the problem is when they, like, they can raise it and raise it and raise it and everyone's like, oh, man, it's going to get good. It's going to get good. Right. But until it teeters, it's not going to get good. No. Because I fished the CNR last week, maybe, and... Man, it, it, dude, it was brutal. No one was catching fish. Right. Was it, it just, pumping? I mean, it was running 450 out of the dam. Okay. So, I mean, it's But, the, like, the fish are just so lethargic mm. because of all that cold water come down. Like, we fished our way up to Taylor to the dam. Um, Got to give a shout-out to my buddy Chad. Just fished with him the other day, first time. Oh, it was nice. fun. Good time. Um, but we fished Taylor on our way up. And like we caught a couple fish on our way up, and they're just lethargic, man. Just down deep, just I mean, the hook sets were weird, slow. Right. The fish just came right to the net. Like I mean, they just aren't acclimated to this. You know, it's so cold that they just don't acclimate. Right. That's the only way I can think about it. I don't know. Right. I mean, I mean, I, I know when they start releasing water um, out of the tailor, those fish start feeding a little bit. They, they they feed with more abandon for sure, but yeah, uh, but to what extent? Like right now, we're just we're kind of just like you said, we're sitting in limbo here, just waiting for something yeah. to happen. And we need it like we need if if they're gonna release out a dam, like it needs to teeter at a point or it right. needs to stop and be like, all right, cool, we're gonna just release right. this for like three weeks, right? And then those fish will start feeding. Right. It, and my beliefs, I mean, but that's the thing is like we haven't seen what 
what we're going to see yet. I mean, is the Taylor going to release 1,200 this year? I don't know. Is it going to be like two years ago where they released almost 1,800? Oh, they released 1,800? I think that's oh, the max. Oh, see, they I thought they release. maxed at 12. Uh, oh, it might max at 12. I, I could thought be it wrong. was 18. Yeah, I for could you be boaters wrong out there, you can feel free no, to. No, like out of the dam, I thought right. they maxed at like, it was like 1,790 or something like that <sighs> that they maxed at. Jeez. Do you remember going down there like a couple of years ago when they were releasing it? It was just like, oh my god, oh, dude! I floated it. <laughs> I floated it, and it, dude, it was uh, you could barely take out at Almont. Like we right. blew by Almont, right. and I was rowing my ass off to get to Almont, and we blew by it. <laughs> right, and it was like, oh shit. Well, we can't go any further. Like we're not gonna make it under bridges. We're not gonna like right. we need to walk the boat up. Right, we need to figure out a place <laughs> to pull over and walk the boat up. Oh, it was brutal. I mean, and what was that? Uh, I think they released, I think the Gunnison saw 50, was it 51 or 5,200 that year? It might have been 52. Right. I mean, what are we going to see this year? We got a couple guesses. I think we guess low. Oh. I have it written down somewhere. It just won't, it, it might, it just wouldn't. Well, the problem is we just keep getting more snow. Right. And we keep getting cold weather. Like it hit, I think, 3,100 the other day or right. about. And then it dropped to 21. Right. And it's like, But what? it's still super off color, right? It's green-ish. Okay. It's still got that muddy tint to it. Right. Especially below Tamichi. Yeah. Right. Um, it, I mean, dude, I don't, I don't know, man. Like, I was talking to a dude the other day where he was like, dude, we might not be floating until mid-July. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. If it just doesn't unleash soon it's going to be the longest runoff ever and it's going to dude it's going to be flood worthy runoff to meet you like I know. three days ago before it got cold to meet you you couldn't even see where to meet you was flowing because there's so many so much water in the yeah, fields just swamp yeah it was like dude i don't even know where to meet you right. is there's so much water and we usually see the to meet you do that at least yeah we do like, at least at, at least for a couple of days i think a, year. a couple of years ago we saw it at like 1200 right. and it was like whoa right. this is huge but right. now that we're both living east of town now we're seeing it more well you know and i live up the courts the courts are still flowing it, relatively clear clear I, I ran over it today i was like are you kidding me it's not unleashing yet because it's so cold i know it's it's gonna be scary when it unleashes oh uh, it's yeah it's gonna be bad i really hope we don't just have like a two-week warm stretch where it just we unleashes. need it though i mean well, i mean we need it i know well that's the thing is nobody likes a long runoff but man like flooding we're talking about structure damage i mean it's not gonna matter down i think Everson, over five grand is flooding no, I like think it's... Like in town? Because uh, we saw 5,200 and it didn't flood town. I mean, no, but like you see like houses have flooded. Right. Like right. certain areas have flooded. Right. But I think they call... I'm not positive. Again, I'm not positive on this. I think they call flood status like above five grand. Right. Is, could potentially flood houses right. depending on how you yeah, rig your shit. Right. I don't know. Well, and I've seen like world record average or not world re world record years <laughs> world record averages for the whole year it's been a world record state for, record for 20 averages years. or what <laughs> yeah uh before like taylor dam was yeah. built you could see you know i mean that's the age-old parable don't build your house where cottonwood grows because <laughs> that had to be flooded at one point i know it's crazy uh, man. but i think they, there were flows like seven grand i think there were flows like 11 uh, like eleven thousand. i could see it right uh, but this is before they could regulate the flow. I mean, this is 19... Right. What? Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, early 1900s. Early, early 1900s. Right, right. I exactly. mean, even before, like, the dam at Blue Mesa was built. Yeah, Blue Mesa was d built in, I think, 1964 or 5. I don't know. We might have to do a little research. Yeah. But, I mean, it's, like... Dude, it's taking a toll. Um, so, I mean, as guides, we're worrying about if we're going to be able to work. Well, let's talk to you. Let's talk about you guys. Last year, really low water year. Oh yeah, we we're working, I mean, struggling to fish. But it it was like the complete opposite where it's like we're working early, right? You know, we had like a 2 week runoff maybe. And then we're working again, but it shut off, you right. know? Like we had to quit floating right. like 
mid August where right. it's like, dude, it, like this is tough. Now you're on the other end of the spectrum. Exactly. Having now another we're on the other end where it's like, oh shit, we're going to go, we're not <laughs> right. going to be able to guide until July. And then we're going to guide through November. Right. You know, or it's going to be one of those Indian summers almost, but right. with high water. <laughs> but with pumping flows. I know. And I mean, it's good. It's good. We all need it. I can't complain. It's good for the environment. It's good for this the ecosystem. all good. Right. It's I all good. I can't complain. It's just tough for a guy to My salary. wallet complains. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. My bank account complains. Well, and property owners might complain. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, this is Memorial Weekend coming up. <clears throat> And I've I've been seeing, you know, people pulling into town. It's like, dude, it's still snowing, man. Right. You're coming from Texas. It's still snowing, brother. Yeah, I had a guy like, come did up. Did you not check the weather? <laughs> right. I had a guy come from the hatchery today, and he was doing a tour, and he was like, well, we usually come up this time of year, and it's usually beautiful. He's like, but uh, we don't really. I mean, I mean, the wind's blowing. There's snow flurries. And I'm like, what are you doing out Here's, here? My dad used to tell me about Colorado. He goes, there's, there's no bad weather. Just bad clothing. <laughs> I'm sure I've said it on the podcast before, but it's like it's true, dude. Like Colorado, like you never know what you're gonna get. Right. Well, you I could, know you could wake up with a foot of snow tomorrow. You could wake up with two feet of snow, or you could wake up and it's 80 degrees tomorrow. Right. It's true. We don't know. Right. Well, no. Weathermen, my- Colorado, are just like, uh, yeah. We don't know. No clue. Yeah. My new expression is: uh, if you don't like the weather in Colorado, wait till August. <laughs> exactly <laughs> and it's like it's you can you can almost thing. guarantee this year was kind of interesting like this is off topic of fishing and all but like up here in gunnison like graduation for western state college or i don't know what they call it anymore whatever the college up here right western something well let's just call it western um, state it's usually on mother's day right this is the first time it didn't snow no it didn't snow since last- i've been up here i don't think it snowed last year i think it snowed last year I don't know, but usually it snows on graduation, right. well, and it, it didn't smoked, snow at it all this year. six inches after. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it, it all pans out. The truth is that I think if you look at it statistically, uh, this isn't like an abnormal No, it's not. Um, May. It's not. By any measure. Like, we usually get snow in May. That always happens. We always get snow in May. fishing usually sucks right. in May. And fishing like, usually sucks. But... This is an unusual year because we're waiting for all this precipitation. Yeah, we're in limbo. Like, to, yeah. to unleash, and it's just not unleashing yet. I mean, we haven't even talked about what it's going to look like, you know, for stonefly fish or salmon fly fishermen in the black. Oh, I know. Uh, when are they going to start? When are they going to do their annual flush? I mean, yeah, I, I've looked it up, but it's like apparently like flows look good in the canyon. Well, the flows are supposed to be in g- good in the canyon well, all through June. Well, they're, that's because they have three reservoirs to yeah. to regulate. And then through, I would assume but, after June it's going to be trash. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know because they still have to do – I mean, I think the usual standard protocol is they have to do a 10-day flush, uh, and they do a 10-day flush of nine, just over 9,000 CFS. The problem is, is they can't do that flush until the reservoirs are charged. Um, interesting. So I if, have no idea. If you gotta, think about it, like they're going to have to keep prolonging the flush until their reservoirs are. I got to do more it. research before we just start recording everything. Well, you might be right. We need to start like writing all this down right. and doing a little bit more research. So we just don't ramble to people. But I do, I do have it on good authority that that's how the system works. Okay. It's far more complex than that. And it, we, we should bring on an expert to do yeah. that. It'd be awesome to talk to someone because it's incredibly complex. Oh yeah, I bet. With and Blue I mean, Mesa, how much Crystal water Morrow. we owe below us, right. you know, like we owe so much water below us. I mean, the Gunnison flows in the Colorado. Right. We owe so much water to the Colorado well, and the Colorado flows all the way down. The Blue know? Mesa dam was built under contract to give nevada water you yeah know? and i mean there's, and there's a lot of water. golf courses in nevada oh, yeah. and arizona <laughs> and a lot of people going out there you know True. it's like i don't know i mean anyway like i mean we went on a little tangent there but i mean fishing is man it's just like it's hit or miss right, right now it's like i don't want to go right now no i i'm not gonna go no no and that sucks no, it's, it, but okay. So the way I think about it, like if people want to book trips for the Gunnison river, no matter what time of year, even in high water, I usually tell them, I go, look, you need to look at either the third to last week of June to the first week of July, like right. third week of June to the first week of July. 
And July 4th, yeah, it's going to be packed. There's tons of people. And the fishing is probably not going to be that good. But like fourth week of June, last week of June. Can be gangbusters. Can be insane. And then all of a sudden it just shuts down. Right. But third, fourth week, like once this river, here's what I tell like clients that they're like, when's the best time? I go, look, excuse me. If I can be there or if you can be here third week of June, might be good. Right. Depends on water. Right. But if that river, my cutoff, I think in, in like in my boat, I feel like is like, I'm pushing if I'm floating at 2,800. Right. Right. That's tough, like to get under bridges. Right. But if that water greens up and it drops to 2,800 and it's green, you better believe I'm going to try. Yeah. Cause it's, and cause it's it can gonna be, be insane. Right. I mean, you're throwing big bugs, hopper dropper, like screw the nymphs. Right. Don't throw the indicator. Nice. Like unless you're in big holes, right. but, but slapping banks, uh, slap banks, even with streamers would probably be unreal. Right. But like, dude, you're catching big fish before anyone's here. So right. there's a plug. If you want to fish, hit me up. Let me know. I'll tell you if the water's going to drop third or fourth week of June. But not this year. <laughs> I don't know, man. Who knows? Dude, like, like I, I said, if it drops, like we could see a peak here in the next week. <sighs> Two weeks, we might see a peak. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Uh, this is so. This is such a weird year, man. It is. It's a really weird year because we haven't seen this much snow in such a long no. time in spring. No, I think we still have four. Maybe five feet of precipitation. I think still waiting Gunnison, to unload. Gunnison County is sitting at like two hundred forty percent snowpack, right or more. Right, <laughs> right. I mean that could take forever. Right. Well, and but the whole like I said, if you if you are a fisherman and can watch the flows, and if it hits twenty eight hundred, I'll let you know if it's green right. and it should be green. If it hits twenty eight hundred and you want if you want to learn how to fish high water. And fish it well, and catch a lot of fish in high water. That's it's gonna be quick, right? But it's good, right? That's what I tell people. I'm like, dude, that's my favorite time because nobody's here. Exactly. I get to fish with all my buddies, right? And nobody's here. I mean, that's nobody when we, books trips. Yeah, that's when we trash fish. Yeah, that's when we're out there and we're like, <laughs> fuck, man, we're trashing these fish before clients even get here, right? Yeah, which is kind of funny, just educating these fish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just on worms and uh, stoneflies. We're still all frothing so hard to get on the river by then anyways. But, but. I mean, like, the last couple of years when we've gone out, like, I mean, I could say, like, the last four years we've gone out and floated during high water. It's been great. Right. Right. And that's when it drops. Like, I took some family friends, oh, well, not family friends, but friends, you know, like, good friends from Texas, like, awesome people. Shout out to the Elliots. Uh, awesome people, man. I need I've, to meet these guys. You ah, speak dude, so they're, of them. dude, they're amazing. They're great people, and they're just they're awesome, super humble, amazing fishermen, amazing outdoorsmen, like, and just good people all around, man. I I like hanging out with them. But took father and son out, and like, dude, the son is hammer time. Like, he can fish, and I keep telling him, like, dude, you, one of these days, like. You're gonna outfish the hell out of me. Right. Like you are good. And he only comes up here for a month. Right. You know, and hangs out and just fishes here and there. And it's like, dude, you're you're good. Yeah, and God bless these kids. And I told him like They're the future. I think it was two years ago, yeah, during our big water year. Like right. I was like, dude, river dropped. We need to go. Like, let's go. It dropped, it's green, it's good, let's go. Green drakes were coming off, like hopper dropper, green drakes, everything, like everything was insane. Yeah. And it was like, I mean, we can talk about 100 fish a day. You know, it was <laughs> like, yeah, we probably saw, right. we didn't boat 100 fish. We probably saw 100 fish. Right. You know, nice fish. Did we get any comments on the 100 yeah, fish? Yeah, no, day? we did. Uh, well, I mean, on Instagram. Uh, okay. We got a couple comments, you know. Oh, see, I didn't like, even see those. Yeah, you did. You, know, you were commenting on them. On Instagram, where it was like, I just listened to that podcast and some dude walked into my shop and said, "Oh, said I, did I just read had a hundred fish day." And I he did just start laughing. Yeah, <laughs> it was like, "Well, somebody's got to do the math because yeah. Ryan McVeigh and I cannot." <laughs> but no, I mean it. 
it's going to depend this year. It really is. But like I said, if you really want to fish before anyone's here and it's good, watch flows. If it comes up to five grand and then all of a sudden drops, you know, in a week to 2,800, excuse me again, be here. Right. Right. And be hire a guide to do it. Right. Because oh. it's, you don't want to be rowing a boat. Like, I love rowing a boat, but like, you want to be fishing. Right. <laughs> and if nobody's here, you better bet your ass I'm going to be fishing. No, you're going to be rowing me. Yeah, I'll be rowing your ass down the river. <laughs> I'll be rowing somebody down the river. <laughs> Hopefully, I get to throw a couple casts. Last year was crazy, man. I mean, this time last year, like early June, all right. we were seeing green drakes, and it was fishing good, and it was amazing. Yeah. We didn't float at all last year. No, I. the flows are so screwed up. just never played out. Just crazy year last year. I mean, we just yeah. get these weird things. I mean, yeah, we're talking a lot about water right now, but like, like I'm saying, if if you if you know how to watch a water right. table, if you know what like what you can think can happen, you know, like by if you can get here right, and the water's good before the first week of July, right, you're solid, right. and you're gonna be here when nobody's here. People will be floating. But oh, it's yeah. not it's 40 be, boats on the water. No, it, well, it's going to be joy boaters anyways. Yeah. You get here on July 4th, you're right. screwed. Right. Well, I mean. There's going to be 80 boats, 100 boats, 120 boats on the water. I just went from 80 to 120. <laughs> There'll be 120 boats on the water. I mean, yeah. 80 of them will be fishing guys. I mean, what's Memorial Day going to look like? It's just going to be a bunch of pleasure boaters, right? Yeah. But, I mean, if it bumps up, yeah. that's scary. I mean, dude, you're it's pushing. Gonna be, it could be carnage. Pushing three grand, right, dude. That's that's a lot of water. Three grand's big for the for game. this river, right? For this river, five grand's five grand's massive. I mean, like I said, three grand. I'm not getting under bridges. No, there's no way. Right, not with a frame. No, not many people are. Right, and dude, there's been a lot of casualties on this river because of that. Yeah, so we'll just have to get inner tubes. Yeah, exactly. Go get inner tubes. Uh, we're joking. Please, please, folks, do not this show is up a, here with inner tubes. This is a, a year where, like, no matter what, you should have your PFD on. Always. I always wear my PFD. Well, you have to, right? No, I mean, even on, like, I mean, commercial, oh, yes. right, right. But even when I'm private boating, like, with friends or whatever, I always wear it, dude. Absolutely. It's nonsense. I saw some posts the other day on Facebook who were like, oh, like, what kind of PFD should I get? You know, like, um, this is what I'm trying to do. Should I wear it all the time? Is it Colorado law? No, it's not Colorado law to wear your PFD. Right. I don't think it's even Colorado law to have it on the boat on the river. Not if you're not commercial. Not if you're not commercial. Right. If you're commercial, you have to wear them and have an extra on the boat. Right. But the way I look at it, I didn't comment on this. I, I just read like kind of the thread, but like it was more along the fact where, you know, old blunt mouth, Matt Miller told me, you know, he's like, dude, like, you got to wear a PFD, man. Like, you just never know what's going to happen. Right. And if you get knocked out of the boat and hit your head, the way I tell clients, I'm like, look, I'd rather be unconscious and floating than unconscious and sinking. Right. <laughs> you know, like, that's right. the way I look at it. And anything can happen out of a boat. And if you're not wearing a PFD, you're screwed. Right. And also, if you're on the Arkansas not wearing a PFD, you're an idiot. <laughs> Oh, no, it's happened. Oh, and man. boats usually flip when you're not wearing a PFD. Yeah, and, exactly. you know, even if you are wearing a PFD, shit happens. Yeah. But you have a better chance. Like, And this is a good year, dude, where it's just like, dude, I, like, you watch me on the boat. You've seen me. It's like PFD goes on before I even get in the boat. Right. Where it's like, this is just my routine. It's got to be on. Right. Because I'm the captain of that boat. And if I bail, shit, we're fucked. <laughs> you know, like. If I go out of the boat and right. I'm unconscious without a PFD, hopefully somebody else can row that boat. But I, you know, most people can't. It depends on where I'm at. Yeah, <laughs> depends on how rocky it is. You fall out right before psychedelic. Yeah, oh, no, you're screwed. Yeah, <laughs> Dane almost fell out the other day, dude. Like two weeks ago, we were floating. I was floating my boat, and we were talking. It was so funny, dude. I wish Dane was here to tell it. But we were sitting there, and we were talking about how like in certain flows there's a drop i know i've talked about it before on this podcast but there's a drop 
right below the town of Gunnison. We call it Psychedelic Falls or the Triple Drop. And it's basically a salmon ladder right. is what they call it. Things claim me so many times. And basically it's just like rock weirs in the middle of the river that drop down. Each drop is about two feet, three feet right. drop. And there's three of them within like 50, 60 feet. Yeah. Probably 50 feet. Yeah. There's three drops. Like you got to hit them hard. Right. And you got to row into it and hit it hard. And the second one, like you can hit it perfectly on the first one, like drop in and it's perfectly fine. Second one throws you for a loop. Like, right when you hit the second one, it just turns the boat sideways. And Dane and I were talking about this. I was like, all right, Dane, like, what do you think, man? Is there a different way to approach it? Like, can we do this differently? Can we come from the right or the left? I can't. Yeah, I always go left center for the most part. I always go left center, too. Yeah, I always go left center for the most part. Right. And, like, but that second one, no matter where you go, it just rips you a new one. It wants to take you where it wants to take you. Oh, yeah. And so, like, I hit the second drop and... Dane's not like me. He's not a small guy, you know? Like, there's a little bit of weight in there. Like, no offense, Dane. But, like, there's a little bit of weight involved. And, like, did we hit that drop and the boat throws sideways? And, dude, he had one hand on the lean bar. His whole body was out the left <laughs> side holding onto his rod all the way on the left side, man. Like, I, I was like, uh-oh, here comes the throw bag. Like, See you, bud. And he's not wearing a life jacket or anything. Right. He's like, oh, no, like, this is a day ruiner. Like, we're done. <laughs> and, dude, he pulled it together and just swung right back in the boat. And he looks at me. He's like, man, should have been wearing a PFD, man. Like, yep. He's like, if I would have been wearing a PFD, I probably would have dropped in the river. And I'm like, you would have been better off. <laughs> yeah. You know, like... It's like, oh no, like, this is not good. Now, now Dane threw his back out for the week. <laughs> dude, we talked about it for a while. I was like, oh man, that was that was rough, dude. Like, I thought we lost you. Oh, God. I thought we were pulling the throw bag. Dude, I've been I've been worked in psychedelic at at three hundred, three hundred. Oh, CFS. I, I swam it one time Dude, that to play, get a boat off there. Like it's attached always, to throw bag and had to swim it. That's a claimer, man. Like it just claims folks. it needs to be gone. Ugh. I just wish they'd clean it up. And it, there needs to be at least a boat shoot, right. like a low boat shoot, like low water boat shoot for everyone. There's a rough period. Like if you hit it, I think it, everyone's scared of it at high water. They're like, oh I my god, I love it at like, high water. Yeah, exactly. At high water, it's you, so easy. You punch right through. It oh, just dude, it's a hit wash. The meat. Yeah, it's just a go, wash. Go right dude, down you the just gut. Go boop 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 yeah. boop boop. Done. It, at like twelve hundred. 1200 i feel like 1200 to like 700 you're like dude i'm real nervous right you're like Like, there's some holes in there that you're like this is not yeah you're standing on your boat you're like looking hard trying to find the right right route and the route always changes and there could be a boat hung up there you never know you never i pull over like if i'm with clients at that level like 700 1200 like i pull over right i'm like dude i'm gonna pull over and look at this because you never know what's going to be in there. Right. You never know if there's a boat, a kayak, like you oh, never know. I mean, you know, me and Paige left a boat there. <laughs> oh, you did? Yeah. You put a boat in there? It's 300 CFS. We're in the bucket. Ah, that's a rough level. We're r 2 uh, which yeah. is a funny little divorce machine. And it turns out <laughs> she thought we needed to be more right. I thought we needed to be more left. And uh turns out we you went. You both guys uh, went counter. Oh, we went over the fall. Not paddling hard enough because we were tr- both steering so hard. We go over the fall. The back of the boat fills up with water, and our bucket goes from 150 pounds to about 3,000 pounds. <laughs> and we realize real quick that we're proper screwed, like proper screwed. Boat starts filling up with water. We don't flip, but we just sit there, and we're like, boat's full of water, moving forward, coming back, moving forward, coming back. And we're both like, sitting in the boat, like the adrenaline's gone. Now we're just like, damn it! <laughs> oh, I've, I mean, there's I've, no way out. Oh, you know, no. like the only, there's one way out, and that's to exit the boat, swim out of there, and then go get someone to pull pull our boat out. And then with a bucket, that's hard. Oh, with the bucket. If you don't know what a bucket is, basically, like there's self bailing rafts. Most of them are self bailing these days. Self bailing meaning they have holes in the boat that exactly. expel water. Yeah. So basically, like in the bottom floor of the boat, like the floor is stitched in, or it has holes in the bottom of the boat. So like if water comes into the boat, usually it can pass through. Right. A bucket boat, there's no <laughs> holes in the bottom. So if you fill your boat with water, it's gonna sink. Yeah. 
That's one, like, if you're going to get a raft, don't get a bucket boat. But I'll tell you this much. Uh, if uh, you just want to punch through things, <laughs> a bucket's pretty awesome. They don't flip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they'll stay there Because they're full of water. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's why they can't flip, because they're full of yeah, water. We sat there for 15 minutes like, oh, man. Oh, I, like, in these falls, I've seen drift boats turned over. I've seen rafts turned over. I've seen, I've had to rescue people. I've had to right. rescue rafts. I've almost flipped in there. Like I caught anchors twice in there. I had a shitty anchor system on one of my rafts. And and dropped? Dropped anchor, oh like going through the falls and it just locks on rocks and you're just sitting there like, oh no. That's the last place you I'm screwed. Be. Oh, and like, no. you're like, why? You know, like, okay, here's a little bit of rigging real quick. Like if you rig an anchor system on a boat, when you're putting the rope through your anchor system, you always tie a knot. At the end of your anchor system. So like, like, cool, so I don't lose my anchor. Right. <laughs> you know, like if my anchor happens to go loose, I'm going to tie a knot at the end so it won't go all the way through the pulleys. Right. This can be good or bad at times. <laughs> and at this time, this was bad. Because <laughs> right. basically I dropped through one of the drops, anchor dropped, hit the knot, and now I'm just stuck. And you'd pull, like, you'd pull the anchor line and it would just back you right back up into the falls right. yeti was it the first fall too second uh, okay. it was always on the That's second the worst. yeah the, it was always, the, second's the, the worst. second one's the worst dude it just yeah. rips you up and it lo- i had it twice dude i had to cut two anchors in there <laughs> i had a client cut one and then i had my ex-girlfriend cut one <laughs> where i was like oh no we're gonna flip a boat right yeah you if, don't get if you get hung up in there, you you get screwed. And I can't touch it because I got to stay on the oars right. to make sure we stay where we need to <laughs> right. be. And it's like grab my knife and cut the freaking, cut the anchor. Brutal, dude. Yeah, brutal. Oh, those falls. Ah, whatever. We another tangent. Uh, just so many times going through there. I'm, I want one more. Like me and Paige that same day are tuning and she's like worried about going through the white water park 300 what are you doing and she's like are you gonna like get hung up at the white water i was like no we're gonna get hung up at at the falls as always and that's why i run my boat she's like why are you she's like why are you worried about that i'm like because because this is because what just happened (laughs) yeah this is why i'm worried yeah Yeah, it's brutal man and like there's a bunch of those like I mean, everyone wants these whitewater parks and everything, to, but the psychedelic is a different story. It's just weird. Uh, it, We're pushing to get it out of there, right. and and I get but, it for boaters, but like you said, when it when it's running twelve hundred, it's 1200? not even for like it's not even fun for boaters, dude. Even when I did whitewater, it wasn't like it was fun for clients, or they're like, yeah, I like, the- oh, I love it, <laughs> and you're like, you don't know the stress I'm going right. through right now. I kind of like the pucker. I got six people who can't paddle, right, <laughs> and I got to go through this thing solo because right. you guys can't paddle. They're just digging air. You know, they're trying to just dig air. And oh, you're no, like, they yep, got, you guys are doing great. They got paddles up in the air, like, woo. Oh, yeah. They're like, woo, take a picture. <laughs> Paddle, please. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Brutal. I, I stuck one in there. That I had a swimmer in Psycho one time. Really? And, working for Scenic? Yeah, working for Whitewater. And it was just like, dude, I hit the second drop and just, er, just stuck. <laughs> and one of the dudes up front just went flying out of the boat. Just endoed out of there. Oh yeah. And I swam the whole thing. Like I had to get out of the boat. Like luckily it was low enough. Like right. I got out of the boat, got on one side, like leaned real hard, dug my whole body into the river <laughs> and it turned off the second. It was the second drop too. Yeah. Turned off the second drop, spun around. I got us corrected. We went down the third Another boat picked up my swimmer. I went and got him. He's like, I lost my sunglasses. I'm like, dude, we're lucky we didn't lose you. You're good. Yeah, like, <laughs> don't, don't worry wor- about Don't worry about those. <laughs> don't worry about those, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, I told you Paige's story. So we got, we're hung up on the first fall. It wasn't the second. We're hung up on the first fall, filled with water, debating, trying to push off the rocks with paddles. Uh, it's futile. We're full of water. Oh, yeah. And then so we decide, Paige's lips start turning blue. I'm like, ah, well, it's time to go. It's yeah. evening. It was a fall float, too. Oh, yeah. It's uh, cold. Yeah, it's cold. And uh, so I'm like, all right, you go first. Uh, I'm the better swimmer. Uh, 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 I was like, you go first. Do you first. have life jackets on? Yeah, we have life jackets. Okay. Uh, Paige always, knows. Paige always knows have better. life jackets. Yeah. Always. Paige took raft training. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you would, Paige knows. You wouldn't think so. Uh, <laughs> I took it with her. But Paige, so Paige, uh, I'm like, all right, you go first. And Paige just jumps as hard out of the boat as she can and starts and stops swimming. 
And so she starts getting recirculated. Oh, and I'm yeah. like, hey, babe, swim. So yeah, she you starts swimming. Swim. So she swims over to the second rapid and then jumps into the second rapid, swims out, jumps to the third rapid, swims out. And I'm like, what the hell are you doing? I slink out of the boat and swim off to the side on the first <laughs> rapid. Now Paige is hypothermic. Oh, God. <laughs> and we, we find some old lady that's like, I know a guy that uh, he'll give you a ride. And we walk over. He's working on his truck. Paige is shivering. Sounds ruthless. Oh, it was just dude. stupid. I mean, people can say that it's three hundred CFS to do with fishing, but it does. <laughs> We're just talking about wearing your life jacket, even in a fishing rig, because right. they do flip. They do get, you know, you could fall out of the boat. Right. So, I mean, yeah, this kind of year, you always wear your life jacket. Wear your PFDs. Should we get into a little bit of fishing here? <sighs> Boring. I know, dumb. <laughs> um, so. That's a you terrible have, segue, by yeah, the way. I know. I know. I gotta get better at that. <laughs> you haven't seen this question, but not gonna lie, I pulled it kind of right off the Meat Eater podcast okay. Okay. that I was listening to today. But I thought it was interesting. They didn't touch on it too hard, um, a little bit, but basically, like, the question was like, let's say you're out fishing, okay, and you know you're catching some fish or whatever. Maybe you're not. Who knows? Here's out fishing. Somebody walks up to you and they go, hey, how's the fishing? What are you using? Are you catching anything? Like, what do you do? Are you going to, like, what are you going to do? What do I do personally? Yeah, personally. Uh, I'm usually pretty. Like, okay, let's say you're having, like, a banner day. Right. And they're watching me track. You're roping them. Right. And this dude's walking up river on you. Or and comes up on you, right? And he's like, "Hey, man, like, are you? Are how's the fishing? You catching them? Right? Okay, let's start with that. You um, say that. First. What I usually tell him, I was like, "You think it's good here? It's way better a mile and a half down." <laughs> 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 Is that what you're really gonna say? Uh, no, man. I, you know, I don't give him everything. Uh, be like, "Hey, look, this is where fish are feeding. Uh, fish river, fish tellouts, fish, you know, flat water, whatever they're eating at." And then I send them down. But are you, are you, I mean, are you going to give them the straight forward and be like, hey, man, like fishing's pretty good today. Like, and if they're pushing, you know, if they're like working for some info, right. are you going to give them the info? No, it depends on how they push. You know how people approach. Yeah. Like, there's yeah. a way to approach someone right. on the river, be like, hey, look. And I'm you can struggling. tell if they're around here or not, right. if they're from here or right. not. Right. But if it's a never ever showing up, one, has he been fishing? You could 20. tell him a bug, and they might have it, right. not any well, idea. It, just, it really just depends on how courteous he was. If he was fishing 20 feet in front of me and walked in on me and What if he just walks me? up on you, ah. and he sees you roped up, <clears throat> and you net a fish? Uh, I'll give him some information. We'll give you some what ifs. Yeah, I'll give him some information. I'm not scared about that. Uh, if it's a good day on the water, and, and there's say I'm in Never Sink, there's plenty of water to go around, right? Uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll one, if he's... Practicing poor etiquette. Poor etiquette. Etiquette, sorry. not etiquette. Etiquette. So I've been drinking, man. Uh, if etiquette. he's practicing poor etiquette, you know, I don't get it. I that haven't. Much. Uh, <laughs> if he's a really polite guy, um, yeah, I'll, I'll give him something. Um, I'll, I'll let him know. What if, like, what if you and I were standing in the river and some dude walked up and was just like, hey, guys, how's it going? How's the fishing? And we're just lighting him up. Right. What would you do? I'm going to tell him, hey, it's obviously pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to, like, look at me? Or are you going to be like, uh, uh... You know how I am, man. I'm personal on the river. You are. As long as someone's polite. You are. And as long as someone's polite and comes up to me and and isn't looking to take my time, isn't looking... This is at, just an inter- interesting question for right. me. Because uh, I know people who wouldn't. Right. I mean, I know people that wouldn't. I'm not like I know that. people who would be like... Throw them the exact opposite way. Oh, no, way. no. That's not how I am, man. You know, like, and like I said, this is coming from the Meat Eater podcast. Right. But they were talking about, like, hunting spots, too, where they're like, what do you do, right. you know? But it's we can apply the same towards fishing, where it's like, are you going to okay. give them all the info? Right. Like, let's say, let, even if you're walking out, like, what if you're walking out and somebody's walking in? And they're like, hey, man, like, how was it? Was the fishing good? Are you going to look at them and be like, ah, uh, or are you going to be like, hey, man, dude, you got to get in here right now? So it all depends on the water I'm fishing. If, I, if I'm on if I I'm, mean, yeah. if I'm on my water, the water I love the most. I'm not going to tell them that. Yeah, I'm going to be like. They can find that on their I'm own. I'm going to be like, it was okay. I might tell them what, they're, what right. to use. 
if it's on the Gunnison, uh, you know, I, I, or the Arkansas, I'm not afraid to give them some information and send them on their way. Also, if we can bring this up. You're in Southwest Fly Fishing Magazine. Oh yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> we can bring that up and give you a little little data boy. <laughs> Ryan McVeigh was in Southwest Fishing Magazine. Yeah, is that yeah. what it is? Southwest Fly yeah, Fishing. Southwest. Yeah, Southwest Fly Fishing Magazine for the Arkansas River fishing yeah. over the Arkansas River. Yeah, congrats, man. Thanks, Fuck yeah, man. dude. Guess where? Uh, see, I I know where it was. Yeah, <laughs> and the truth I is, saw the pictures. I'm not upset about I know where it was. I, I like. You, know, you don't have to say anything you don't want to say. This is the whole question, man. You don't have to tell anybody uh, where you are. It's the Arkansas. There yeah. are no secrets on the Arkansas. There's not many. No. You can float it. And, and you there's can... not many out here either. Right. I mean, I mean on the Gunnison. So, yeah. This is the Gunnison, the Arkansas, the Taylor. Man, I don't care. I'm just trying to give you that a boy. I know. I know. Thanks. If you can pick up a, a copy of Southwest Fly Fish <laughs> Magazine, Ryan McVeigh is in there. Yeah. And uh, on the Arkansas River. So congrats, brother. Yeah, it's cool. Hell yeah. Ah, it's something to do. Yeah. Hell yeah. It, it got but. me it got me so many pro forms. <laughs> so popular. Dude, now. I done made it. Sims has been I'm knocking so down my door. So popular man. now. The Sims rep just keeps calling me. He won't leave me alone. Like, dude, we want you. Pro staff, <laughs> bud. <laughs> You need to be the best. He said, do you sponsor trips? Can yeah, you sponsor trips? Can you trip? be on every cover of magazines? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, if you're walking out, like, are you going to say something? Um, it, it I d- won't tell him exactly where I was. Exactly. So I don't give up I spots. might tell him where I, right. what I'm using. Right. If I'm on the Gunnison, I'll give him something. If I'm in the Arkansas, I'll give him and something. And, again, I feel like you're almost profiling it at times, you know, where, you're like, you walk by somebody, you're like, hey, man, how's the fishing? What were you using? Right. If you're like, hey, it was good, man, and they're like, what were you using? I'm like, ah, you know, I might not tell them exactly right. what. I might be like, ah, oh, dude, small betas. Right. Right. Like, really small betas, like 18 to 20. Right. You know, depending, and you're profiling. You know, you're like, I don't know who this guy is. I profile on oh, the yeah. river. It's faster. You ha- yeah, exactly. <laughs> you have to. Instead of getting into a conversation with these people, it's like, all right, right. You know, like I can but tell sometimes you, I like, can tell you what I don't do. I'm okay, not yeah. Get, tell me what you don't. I'm do. not gonna give them misinformation. I'm okay. not gonna be like, hey man, f- flows are super low. I'm not gonna be like, hey, throw trot beads. Just throw beads and worms. You're oh, gonna dude, kill they're it. Crushing beads. Right. I'm not gonna do that. And you it's know? like July. Right. You're like, oh, dude, they love eggs right, <laughs> right. now. Right. I get you. Uh, I, I'm not going to kill them, man. I definitely profile. Like, if I'm fishing alone, even with clients, like, right. with clients, I might church it up a little bit, you know, but if I'm fishing alone, I'm walking out. Okay, let's put it this way. If I'm walking out and somebody rolls up to me and, like, meet them on the trail or whatever, and they're like, hey, man, how was it? I'm like, dude, it was good. Obviously, what are they going to say? What right. was working? Right. What were you using? Right. And depending on the person, yeah, I'm going to profile the shit out of him. Right. Like, who is this guy? Right. Where does he come from? Does right. he come from Denver? Is he in Gunnison? Is he traveling through? Like, does this guy fish hard? Does right. he know what he's doing? Is this guy just some Joe Schmo? Right. Is That's going to go tell all his buddies. Is he geared up to the nines with new gear? Is exactly. he geared up to the nines with old gear? I'm going to profile the shit out right. of this guy. Right. And depending on what you say, they might not even know what you're using. You'd be like, oh, dude, BWS. You could be like, oh, mergers, bro. And they're like, what's that? Right. You know, and like you can show them. It depends on the person. It depends like on the I person. Like I said, I might roll up and be like, know the dude or have seen the dude. I right. know the dude fishes or whatever. And right. it's like, I'm not going to tell them exactly right. where I'm going. But I'd be like, oh, dude, 18 pheasant tails. Right. <laughs> right. Crushing it. That's pretty vague too. I can tell you what I never like. I said I can pretty tell you what vague. I I can tell you what I don't do. What I don't do when I run into some guy and he's like, "Oh, how was it?" I never say, "Oh, it was gangbusters. I killed it." I never do that. Never. I say it was super fun. It was a good time. Did you catch a bunch of fish? Yeah, I caught fish. Yeah, I, I caught like, some fish. Well, how many? Right. Ah, dude, I don't count. Yeah. And we were just talking about counting fish on the last episode, right. but it's I, like, ah, dude, I don't count. And I do count fish sometimes. Sometimes. For scientific reasons. Oh, there you go. <laughs> we already talked about right. this. We have been over this podcast. But, I mean, that's a tough <clears throat> thing to do. Right. Like, even when you're floating by, like, okay, 
different scenario. It, different scenario when you're floating by and like you're rope and fish, you know, you just get a quick second by these people, you know, or it's like you're just floating through. Maybe your client's ripped up. Maybe you're ripped up. Who knows? You're hooked on a fish. Oh, what are you using? Uh, um, small ones, man. Small <laughs> ones. You know, like it depends. Right. We're like, oh, dude, they're eating stones. Right. You don't know what kind of stone. Right. You don't know if it's a golden stone. You don't know if it's you know yellow sally you don't know if you're using black you don't know if you use right. brown or coffee or whatever right. it's tough man and right. it's like i've definitely been around people where they're like oh don't tell people shit right like lie to them see i disagree i do too man and that's tough i'm not into that man we're we've all learned we all had to learn how to fish at some point in our life and it's tough and like if people are asking like it's i feel like it's our duty to be like yeah I'm not going to tell you everything. Right. But here's a bug. Right. You know, I might not say exactly what bug. I might be like, hey, 18 to 22 brown betis. Right. Doesn't, you don't know what that is. Exactly. You know, you might not know what the exact bug is. Well, and I'm might... like, oh, dude, black stone flies. Yeah. Right. Small mayflies. That's yeah. what I've been. Yeah, exactly. Right. Small maize, dude. I mean, so here, here's but a... if you're if you're like, Let's say I walk up on you. Here's a better scenario. You walk up on me? Let's say I walk up on you. I don't know you. You don't oh, know okay. me. If you know me, I'm going to be like, yeah, you know better than I do. No. Fuck off. You don't know me. I don't know you. Sorry I walk for, up on you. Sorry for that for <laughs> you. You're walking out. I walk up on you. I'm like, hey, this guy can fish. I'm like, hey, man, how was it? Good. I'm like, cool. You know, I mean, were there any bugs coming off? Ah, man, I didn't see much. You know, were you catching fish? Yeah, I was fishing. You know, it was, it was fishing pretty good. Oh, what were you using? Then what are you gonna do? Well, you've already made the you've already made mistake number one. Ah, oh, yeah, man, it was fishing pretty good. Yeah. No, you said that. Oh, I said. that. <laughs> I'm walking in on you. Uh, You're walking out. I wouldn't have said that. <laughs> You're like, ah, oh, it's terrible. Uh, no, I would have. Now been... you're lying. No, I wouldn't. I, I, you give information, you don't give too much. You say. How was it? Like, oh, it was great. It was good. It was great. I had a blast. Oh, it's now it's great. It's okay. How was it so great? What made it so great? Who asked that? I, I might. Oh, but well, what made it so great, dude? That's when you don't get the answer. Well, like I think about a great day a lot differently than most people do. Yeah, but now you're stepping boundaries. No. See, and now I know you're the what person people, I don't want to give information what people, to. Exactly. You don't want to give me no, information. I already profiled I'm you. the dude that's going to rip up right. the spot. You, I already profiled you. See, you when you were like, how a, good was it? Exactly. Why was it good that way? I'm happy like, medium. I'm like, you got to ah. find a happy medium. We're like, this dude's right. not going to blow up this river. Right. He's not going to blow up this spot. I might give him some information. You know, you never know what's going to happen out there. And you can give people some information. Shit happens. And all of a sudden, this dude walks up. I'm going to give him some shit. You know, depending on who they are, where they come from. Yeah, you're going to profile the shit out of them. What if you're floating though, like floating by, you come by really fast. And like if people on the bank ask you like, hey, what's working, bro? You know, I don't know if they're going to say it like that. I don't know if they're Valley Bros or what. <laughs> I don't know hey, why bro. that came out. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. What's, what's cracking? What's crushing fish? Uh, maybe bro. that's who, how fly fishing is going these days. I don't know. Um, but I mean, if you're floating by, like I might come by and somebody's like, you might be roped up on a fish. Client might be roped up, whatever, and you're like, "Hey, what's working, man?" Like, a I'm gonna boat. keep it. A boat's working. Yeah, boat's better right now. <laughs> they be like, "Hey, here's my card." Um, I might keep it pretty vague and be like, "Hey, black stone flies." You know, like, right. I, I would even be more vague. Stones. Yeah, stones, dude. Throw stones. You know, like who knows? No, literally rocks. My so like <laughs> I've only done this like a couple times. Like, I had it dialed up here just a minute ago what i was gonna say but it's basically <laughs> like if people are asking that much info and they're like hey man like are you catching fish like how many fish you know how's it going what kind of bugs are you using? i go here's my card <laughs> i've done that a couple times where it's like here's my card do you want my card if you want to go fish <laughs> here's my card i did that one time on a boat <laughs> We're like, there's just some people sitting on the bank. They like weren't fishing. We were just hanging out and like it was my dad and I actually right. just hanging out on the bank. You and Monty. Yeah, Monty, old Montgomery. <laughs> Roping fish and these people were just hanging out watching, They're like, holy shit, like these guys are crushing it. 
And we just kept going after like 30 minutes, dude, in one hole. I just looked at these people. I go, so like, do you guys want my card or, <laughs> you know, do you want to learn how to fly fish? And they just laugh. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess you don't. I mean, I, I, I would say that to somebody. Though. I'll also follow up this question with another question. How often have you been like really poked and prodded? You know, some people will, man. See, I, it's happened. Some people will just freaking go for it. Let me see your box. Let me see what you're throwing. I've had it, dude. And you're like, whoa, man. Like, no. Like, if I offer, like, hey, let me show you. Right. Let me show you what was working. I used to do it, like, all the time. Right. You know, like, oh, let me show you exactly what was working. Here, take a couple bugs. Now I don't right. so much anymore. I don't know what's changed, but now I don't so much anymore. So uh, Because I'll... it's my business. <clears throat> You know, it's like, right. hey, if you want to, if you want to come fish and fish the gunny, right. fish around this valley and be good at it, hire me. Right. I'll Here, sh- I'll- you know what I'm gonna start doing, dude? Just open my box with a card in there. I'm like, oh, here you go. And just <laughs> hand him a card <laughs> instead of a fly. Be like, oh, my God. oh, here you go. I got a lot of ideas with opening a fly box. There's different things in there. Here you go, folks. Guides. <laughs> oh, guides. I had one about opening a box, and there's a piece of pizza in there. <laughs> it's like, oh, no, I'm just hungry, dude. Nah. I'm not changing the flies. <laughs> <laughs> pepperoni, man. They're crushing pepperoni. No, no anchovies. That's a pretty good idea, dude. They'd be like, here, let me show you what's working and just hand them a card. Uh, That's so, a pretty good idea. So here, here's a good example. Uh, I'm down at... I'm down at a uh, specific area. <laughs> I'm not going to give this one away. I tailwater. love it too much. Uh, you could call it a tailwater, but okay. it's not. Uh, well, not no, mine. I don't even know what the not hell it mind. is. We'll talk about it later. Okay. Uh, once my lips get a little looser over some beers. Uh, <laughs> but he was a British fella. He came down. Uh, what during, does that matter? Well, one, he's a complete. <laughs> he's, he was checking everything. <laughs> so uh, he comes down. He's like. Hey man, like I came down here to fish. I've seen so many photos. He's like, I've seen so many photos off Instagram. He's of like, your Instagram or no, just not mine? Uh, just uh, Instagram. I thought he like knew you personally. He's yeah. like, I know you from Southwest yeah, he, Fly Fishing yeah. Magazine. <laughs> 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 I'm just fucking. I happen to be wearing the same <laughs> shirt. <laughs> Had to throw that in there. Uh, I'm sorry, dude. Uh, go, Had to throw that in there. Go f yourself. <laughs> <laughs> what to keep it? What to keep it light? So he's up on top. He's up above me. Uh, it's kind of tough to get down below to where I'm fishing. So he's like, hey, man. He's yelling. And I'm like, oh, w- what's up, buddy? And he's like, so aren't you that dude? And I already no. can't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm done. And uh, so I signed his fly box. And <laughs> <laughs> signed his copy of the magazine. I done made it. I don't know if you knew that. I made it. Yeah. <laughs> I made it, dude. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Uh, I'll, I'll stop. But he's up way above me, and he's, like, yelling down. And I'm like, all right. One, the fishing was garbage. Uh, so I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Did you lie to him? No. I was like, no. here, come down here. We'll, we'll, we'll chat. So uh, he comes down. He's like, I'm from England, and, you know, I came down here to fish. And uh, I was like, how would you find out about this place? And he ran into some girl at a bar who said that uh, her – Sounds like a floozy. Boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> who says her boyfriend fishes down here. I'm like, all right. Oh. And he's like, you know – what should I be fishing? I was like, first off, you should be somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> this place sucks. Which was true. Uh, it was garbage. It was the worst flows ever. They were pumping water out of there. Uh, I'm not giving too much away. Uh, but so he walks down, and I was like, well, let me see your fly box. He opens his fly box. He's got two tarpon flies. He's got a black death. Perfect. He's got two tarpon flies. One of them is a black death. The other one I couldn't recognize. It's just a tarpon fly. He's got... Two Mickey fins and like two size, I swear to God, two size two pheasant tails. He has eight flies in his mouth. Oh, well, no wonder he's not catching <laughs> shit. Did you give him some bugs? Uh, no. So, because none of the bugs were going to work. Oh, no. we weren't catching was, any anyway. Trash. The flows are awful. And I was like, there's one place you can go to fish in this valley. You need to go to the tailor. And I was like, you need to call Patrick Blacktail. There you go. And Shout out to Patrick yeah. Blacktail. And I was like, he, I was like, this is the one, ri- this is one piece of river you can fish right now. Everything else was just blown out at the time. And I was like, call Patrick Blacktail, so Taylor, and he'll. <laughs> the Taylor was the only one that was gonna fish. And so I just gave him 
that info. Good. And, uh, he did have one bars and merger. So oh, I was like, and that'll work. It's probably like a size 22. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one it, size 22 bars. He didn't merger. have a size 22 in that box. It was the funniest <laughs> box I've ever seen. I used to know this Oh, he had, a, he had a couple clousers. Too. Oh, nice. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Uh, so, you know, in that particular situation, like, one, none of us were catching fish. The flows were just You might as trash. well give him some info. Right. And yeah. so I, but that's the whole thing. I was like, man, I'm not going to guide you. You need to go talk to someone who can on the tailor, and this is where you need to go. This is who you need to contact, you know? I've done it once before, but I got a story about tarpon flies. <laughs> so I grew up with this dude. He's... No longer around is what I heard, but Tim Ziegler. I don't know if anybody knows this dude ever, but no, um, my dad kind of taught him how to fly fish a little bit. But um, moved down to Florida, and he lived on a bass pond, and they'd fly fish out there all the time and um, fly fish for tarpon and shit. But he'd come, out, come back out from Florida to Colorado, like stomping grounds, and we'd go fish reservoirs for bass, and he'd throw tarpon flies at bass. Dude, he'd be in the front. Like, we'd have a drip boat because we used to build drip boats. He'd have, we'd have a drip boat with a trolling motor on it. And, yeah. oh, yeah, dude. We'd just be yeah. cru- like a 16-foot drip boat with a trolling motor on a bass pond, dude, just crushing around. And he'd be just chucking tarpon flies and just hammering bass, dude. Hammering them. That makes sense. It was pretty sweet to watch. Oh, that's oh, awesome. like pink and white tarpon flies with oh, like a yeah. little flash of boo and some eyes. Like, oh, unreal, dude. <laughs> it was unreal. Like this dude, I yeah, unreal. Right. Tim Ziegler. Shout out to Tim. He's not around anymore, but shout out to Tim Ziegler. Uh, but well, the funny thing is, like, he opens his fly box. I'm like, that's a black death, and he's like, what does that do? I was like, it catches tarpon. That's a yeah, real that's, good tarpon fly. That, you, you're in the wrong place, buddy. I was like, man, and and he came for to, your four yeah. fly fly box right now. <laughs> you're in the wrong goddamn place. <laughs> I bet a Mickey fit to catch a tarpon. <laughs> it probably would yeah. in a certain scenario, <laughs> but I've I've definitely done it. Like working at the restaurant, like I I've I'd have like servers come up to me like waitresses come up to me and be like hey there's this dude out here asking about fishing and you're the only one i know like i'd be in the back of the kitchen cooking you know like you're the only one i know who knows about fishing like all right give me about five minutes like i'll come talk to the dude walk out to the bar here's this dude sitting there just drinking his shitty fishing sorrows away <laughs> but like, yo you must be the dude i need to talk to right now <laughs> i, I can tell by the um, by the amount of alcohol you've consumed and there you go you got you must profile i'm profiling dude <laughs> and he's wearing the right clothing dude he's got the buff on you know like he's he looks the part but i i did it a couple times at the bistro and i sent this dude um high water is running like four grand sent him down to the spot on the gunny muddy as hell like it's muddy, and right. I was like, dude, I was down there yesterday. It was bonkers. <laughs> like, throw a worm, right. lots of weight, dude, <laughs> right. and it was lights out. Like, yeah. you'll catch eighteen inch rainbows the whole time. Like, you probably won't see anything under sixteen inches. Right. Like, that's just the way it is. Like, right. these rainbows are still moving up these little creeks, and it's like right at the mouth of this little creek on the gunny. I know. You're yeah, about. you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I was like, dude, this is exactly where you need to go. Here's what you need to throw. Go do it. Comes back the next night, and he's like, dude, absolutely unbelievable. Like, I've never right. had a day of fishing like that in my entire life. Like, unreal, man. Right. Like, I gave him all the info. I wasn't blowing anything up. No. I wasn't blowing anything special up. We're not worried about this. No, and he's like, dude, give me your card. Like, I want people to come out here and fish with you. Like, that was so awesome what you did. Like, loved it. Right. So I've done it. I profiled the dude a little bit. You got to know. I was like, you know what, dude? Screw it. It's running four grand. Right. Who cares? And God bless his heart, man. Get get that guy some fish, you know? Oh, he loved it, dude. Right. And he was a good dude. Like, he was right. at the bar just like, shit, man. Like, why did I come up here? Right. It's all blown out. And I was like, dude, I'll I'll hook you right. up fat. Yeah. and uh, He know, didn't tip me or anything. It wasn't like, hey, here's a $50 bill for your info. No. It was like, nah, dude, I'll just give you the shit. Uh, I mean, here's the thing. Like, we all had to learn how to fish at some point. If we didn't have some mentor or some voice somewhere to get us started or get us kind of moving. Oh yeah. Like 
I'm all about giving. Uh, I'm all about giving to the sport like it's given to me, you know. Give to the people. You know, they bought a fishing license. Uh, they pay for... Oh yeah, they pay for the restoration of our rivers. About they pay this, for yeah. bio, you know they 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 spent the money. Yeah, they went through the work. Uh, they just don't know how to fish, and we've been that person. I've been that person, and I was that person not very long ago. You know, it happens, right? Uh, I I can think of another example. I'm down, and this is an easier example, and this is a lot more black and white. I'm down uh, fishing for salmon at one of our local salmon holes, and uh, father son come down there, and all they know how to do is swing streamers and they're not catching fish and I'm trashing salmon. And I'm like, all right, come here guys. And let me show you what's right. Up. I gave them, I gave them both four flies out of my fly box. I gave them two apiece, and it was a Mickey fan and, and what the Theo's and you're just nymphing bomber. Us, right. right. Exactly. Yeah. They're, they're swinging streamers. I'm nymphing and I'm trashing salmon. Not yeah. that that's any testament to my ability, but I change their rig. I show them how to do it and I walk out. I'd caught my 30 fish for the day. I'm good. And you're uh, good. And I'm up in my, <laughs> yeah, I'm happy. I'm satisfied. I get to the top of the car and uh, I look down and I just start seeing them roping up and I felt good. It was awesome for me. Oh yeah. I didn't, you know, I didn't blow up a hole. I didn't give them too much data. <laughs> it's uh, cool. And it's salmon. That's the coolest part about it though. Yeah. Is like, if you do share info, right. like, I mean the whole goal, like, there's definitely people you don't share too much info with that uh, we've talked about a little bit. Right. But the whole goal is, like, to get people into it. Right. And people come up here at certain times to fish. They hear it's good. They want to be here or anywhere. They go, hey, Colorado's good at this point in time. I want to be there. But there's a lot of people who don't want to help others. Right. And don't want to show them how to do stuff. And, like, that's what's good about it. Right. Where we can, you know, give them flies and show them what to do and show them how to do it or whatever. Right. But like I said, you know, there comes a certain point where you're like, hey, man, you're asking too many questions, you know. Right. Here's my card. Right. Uh, I, I, I think it's really simple. Don't be an asshole. No. Um, but if the person is poking, prodding, prying, uh, you, know, you know, they don't get much. It's all about how you conduct yourself on the per- river. And perceive the situation, too. Right. I mean, Every yeah, situation. Is. Is I different. mean, honestly, like, because... Here's the thing, like if you're floating down the river, that's different too, because you got tags on your boat. It says who you work for. Right. You know, they're gonna look that up and be like, Oh, this dude worked for Crest Butte Angler, you know, and he was a dick or whatever. Right. You know, like if we say something wrong or do something right. wrong, like they're gonna know who we work for. Right. You guys work for this guy. All right, cool. We're gonna give a bad review. You know, because this guy was an asshole. But if you come by and you're like, hey, man, look, I'd love to help you out. Like, if I had more time, I'm floating by right now. You guys seem like cool dudes. Here's right. what's working. Right. Because I'm not fishing that whole long. They're there. Right. You know, I'm just floating by. It's like, yeah, this was working. Right. Here's, and, what, here's what you should throw. Right. And I've been that guy, too. I've been – I can think of a specific instance. I was in the black somewhere, and uh, a guy walked up on me, and we were struggling. Me and a buddy were struggling to catch fish. And I turned to this guy. He was walking up and around us, and he just warned us about a bear upriver. And I was like, hey, man, like, are you picking up fish at all? And he was like, you know, I'm really not. Uh, and the weather was perfect. Conditions were perfect. It was pre-rainbow spawn. Everything was perfect, but nobody was catching fish. Hmm. Um, in that situation, you know, and then we all kind of sat down together, uh, smoked a cigarette, and I was like, we kind of spitballed of what was going on, why we weren't catching fish, where they might have been. And the guy ended up turning into like someone I needed, a crutch, to just being an advocate. You yeah. Know? Like, just like we all started sitting like, there oh, thinking I'm about getting it now. Right. I'm picking them up now. Right. Here's what's working. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it was just one of those situations where, like, you know what, man? Like, we're all decent fishermen here and we're striking out and we don't know why. <laughs> and, uh, this guy, you know. Oh, yeah, and that, I mean, that happens right. even with guides. Right. You know, where it's like, hey, man, like, are you picking them up? We're like, yeah, here and there, you know, like, on this. Right. Because we're all out there to do the same thing. Right. You know, it's like, hey, we're all out here making money. Yeah, you, you're you going to keep some things right. a little to yourself. Well, like, and those, because you got to make money and be yeah. good at it. But. And there's the guides that you just, you don't want to give them a damn thing. Because, no, no. Because, one, sure. they don't appreciate it. Two, they don't reciprocate. And yeah. But the guides who ask, right. the guides who are willing to ask, we're like, hey, man, are you picking them up? They're like, yep. Right. Here's what they're eating. Right. 
because the guys who don't ask are like, all right, you got yeah. either you got it figured out or you don't want to ask. Right. Right. And I've been and that I, guy I, too. Same. <laughs> I've been that guy ever like, screw that. I'm I should have asked. I should have asked. <laughs> you know, I should have pumped his stomach three fish ago. Right. You know, I should have known. <laughs> I should have done this. Right. You know, and it's like you're the dude who asks her, like, and you feel terrible right. about it. You're like, oh, I'm the guy who's asking right. what the fish are eating right now. Well, so this. But you got to soak up your pride sometimes. Be like, hey, what are they eating? Right. Right. You, okay, so you can take it's it all, from a guide perspective or a different right. perspective. I mean, you could take it either way. I mean, it's all research and development, you know, especially for you guys on the river. Like, you guys are a community. But yeah, exactly. But you can take it either way. Right. Like I said, like you can take it as just like a private fisherman out there just doing some, just fishing. Right. Or you can take it from the guide perspective where it's like, hey, man, yeah, it sucks to ask. Right. It sucks to ask what you're using. It's painful for me. I can tell you that right now. I, I, it takes a lot for me to want to. If like, I have to ask, I know I'm hurt. Right. Where I'm like, dude, I need a right. bug. I don't mind asking you. I need to know. What's but a, I don't. Yeah, I'm not going to ask. It takes a lot to I'm ask I'm not going to ask everybody on right. the river. Right. No, and here's the funniest part, though, about this is like, everyone wants to tell you, you know, like if you run into somebody who's catching fish, and like, okay, scenario like you're floating down the river and you're catching fish like you're having a great day you know you you got it dialed you're catching fish you float by some dude walk away and he's gonna tell you what's working <laughs> I, i've seen that too oh yeah you float by and they're like oh man dude i've had the best day i've ever had and you're like cool man that's awesome and your clients are looking at him like what the hell man right. like we're catching fish dude right. and he's he's like oh dude i've been using this psycho prince man and i've just been hammering them and you're like cool bro nice like reference to a perfectly benign fly yeah psycho no, i prince. almost said the copper john right. i was like <laughs> i was like good psycho like <laughs> but i've had certain people do that or like you float by them every day and you're like, oh, I've had the most wonderful. And they almost like want to make you feel bad and your clients feel bad. Oh, yeah. Where they're like rubbing it in their in your face. We're like, course. oh, I know I'm catching more fish than you. And be like, dude, do you know how many river miles we're floating today? <laughs> we like, did okay. Today. Yeah, you're fishing one area. <laughs> you might have caught 15 fish. We're like, we saw 50 fish we had 150 fish yeah exactly we had 150 fish day (laughs) no you know what i mean though like you float somebody by somebody who's doing good and they're like oh man let me tell you like this is the best day i've had like here's what i'm using you're like i didn't ask i just asked how your day's going hey how are you today oh my god tell you what brother it's the best day i've ever had on the river here's what i'm using i'm using a size 16 psycho (laughs) prints Drop below it is a WD-40. It's amazing. <laughs> Haven't ever seen anything like that before. And you're like, huh. Uh, so how, I'm not using that, but you, I'm still catching fish. So you talked about clients, like the type of clients. We, I never, did, okay. we never did a list of like the type of fishermen you walk up on. So let me just put this out there. I'm not going to put it all out there, but I did put it on the Guided Trip website. Oh, it's brilliant. I wrote out types of clients you can go to the guided trip.com go to tips tactics and bs and you can find it it's called the types of clients but i wrote it out and just read it i it's, mean if you want to i can tell you i read it i read it to my i read it to my fiance when she was in the shower and we <laughs> cracked up oh keep talking <laughs> <laughs> easy bro sorry man no uh but i read it out and it was it's it's funny, man, and it's funny because it's true. And if you're offended by it, uh, well, but that's we, probably because yeah. you're one of those guys. Yeah, you get you are if you're painting with I that brush, you're pretty been, clean and dry. Yeah. Is like, look, this is a joke, right? If you can't take it like it is, then you know, oh, man. See, we could do that with types of fishermen that you run into. I know. I mean, you run into all. Like I said, the, I want to show you my whole fly box. Exactly. And where I let got me you. show you what's working. Yeah. That I mean, you get that guy, and then you get the you get the guy who I mean, what would you call that? That's like he's almost fishing. He's fishing for bugs, you know. Or like you roll by in a boat, and he's fishing. And he's like, "What are you guys throwing? What do you? What's working? 
You know, you get the fishermen fishermen. Uh, I just call them the gapers. Like yeah, they got their I mouth mean, open, they're a little uh, confused, or they got the hat on, or, you know, <laughs> they got the hat on with all the flies dangling off well, of it. Well, half and of them got a guide trip the day before and then they showed up the day after. Exactly. And, and they're like, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got this dialed. I, I thought caught, I had it. I caught fifteen fish yesterday turns with the guide. Out, yeah, it <laughs> turns out my guide showed me everything and I had all the bugs and I don't have any of those. <laughs> It's hard, dude, but yeah, we should do types of uh, types of fishermen. Types of fishermen would be funny, cause I mean, I've walked up on so many guys that are just like, "Hey, um, can I show you my fly box? And can you point at something in my fly box that might work?" Yeah, okay. and and they even know. Like, oh, I love that, dude. Yeah. People, and they even and know. They only, here's the thing that you know, like when they only have one fly box. Uh, yeah, you're like, you don't really know what you're doing. <laughs> I'm sorry, like I'm not trying to be dick when I say that, like. But a lot of people who haven't fit like, like this, it's all a learning curve. Uh, it takes forever. But it's a lot of a work. A lot of people have like one fly box. And you're like, right. hey, would you take a look at this? Oh, God. And a- you're like, D- dude, like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, you need everything right. else. Right. <laughs> like, you don't have anything in there that's gonna work. Right. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's what the, that you dude, don't know what to say, right. dude. It's such an awkward feeling <laughs> when like somebody opens their fly box and they're like, "Hey, just take a look at this and point to uh, something right. that looks like what's working." And you're like, "Nothing. Ah. Ah. You have eight flies, right? All you have, you have seven green Drake patterns, and, and that it's sucks. May, man. And we're not trying to be dicks when we right. say that. It's just like it's a learning curve, and it like." We talk about having too many flies and we talk <laughs> about now we're talking about not having enough. Right. But it is true. Like you might run into situations where you like you don't know what you're gonna need and right. you need it all. Right. And if you're gonna show your fly box to somebody and be like, Hey, will you look at this? Right. I'm gonna that's to the point where I'm like, Hey man, let me just give you a couple flies. Right. <laughs> right. Let me just give you a couple of flies. <laughs> You know, where it's like, uh Well, and that... Here, how about you take these? That's where this British fella put me in a pickle. One, he didn't have a single fly. You're like, here, I'll trade you your tarpon flies right. for these. <laughs> I should have I should have <laughs> traded him for that Black Death. That yeah, was a $7 should, fly, yeah, man. you should have traded him tarpon flies, dude. <laughs> like, hey, I'll give you some flies that might work somewhere else. Here's two pheasant tails. Give yeah. me that Black Death. Let me have that. <laughs> this, this fly is... Uh, it, you don't need this ever. Ever. But you know if that happens, like if you're on the river and that happens, somebody's like, hey, will you take a look at my fly box? It's always an awkward situation. Right. But like, oh, those look great, man. <laughs> you got good flies. <laughs> I don't Like, they're not going to work. I you mean, got great flies. The funniest, they're awesome. The funniest thing is when they open their fly box and you're like, you can only use that one. Yeah. Throw that one on. Oh, good thing you only got one. I can't guarantee you that's <laughs> going to catch fish, but that's yeah. the only one in your that's box the only that one has that a shot. looks like it might work. Right. That's tough, dude. It's such an awkward right. conversation that you have to have. With but people. here's where I stand on that. If a person shows up and they're clueless, help your fellow man. Yeah, that's what I said. I was like, we've been give, there. Give that dude some flies. Right. Give that guy some flies. At least give that guy some tips, or at least give that put that guy in the in the in the right point that guy in the right direction. It's a tough scenario to uh, be it's in. It's pretty mean to leave someone just. Oh, high I used dry. to show up to the river with just worms and stoneflies and be like, this is all I need. I mean, something. And I got taught a lesson pretty yeah, quick. Right. He's like, nope. Oh, man. Worms and stoneflies ain't going to work. Yeah, he opens this one box, and I'm like, I'm like digging through the bottom of mine, trying to find the one, just trying to find my betas box, you know? <laughs> We're like, dude, oh, I got to help you out. Yeah. Uh, but you know, you're in a. I need to help you situation when somebody asks you, hey, will you take a look at my box? <laughs> right. If they ask you to look in your box. And Just one box. Right. <laughs> the one. The exactly. one that they have. Right. And that sounds shitty. That sounds like pretentious. It sounds like we're, that's not what we're trying to push. We've all been there. Everybody, like it, once you start getting into fly fishing, you have tons of boxes. Right. Like I have a guide box where it's like, hey, these are my guide flies. Like, these are flies I might throw on that might work. Right. But I'm willing to lose them. Right. <laughs> you know, like, I'm willing to lose this fly in a tree. Right. You know, or it's like, you know, this is just kind of like my shit box. Right. Not, like, not saying they're not going to work. I'm not trying to, like, downplay myself, but it's like, 
not saying they're not going to work, but it's like, hey, I'm willing to lose this fly. All right. Well, and you profile you profile your clients again. Yeah, you got to profile clients. Um, if they're casting really badly at the beginning of the day, yeah, maybe here don't. you go. I'm gonna dip into the guide box. Yeah. If they start figuring it out halfway through the trip, all right, let's start right, getting them. Let's some, throw something on that yeah. works. <laughs> <laughs> I tell people about it, just fucking with them. I'm like, all right, now you get the good flies. Right. <laughs> I'm going to throw something on that works. Uh, kind of messing with them. I mean, the hardest thing to do is like when you're fishing with a buddy and they're like, oh, why are my flies working? And like, cause Or they just keep losing flies and you're well, like, how do you tell a buddy that the drift sucks? Yeah, that's a hard part. Like your flies are fine. But like, dude, your flies are the ones I'd be throwing, right. but, like, your drift is blowing it. Right. How do you tell your buddy that? Right. I'm not going to reach over my buddy and take his arm. And But what did I, like, I mean, what did I do to you? I was like, hey, man, can I can I say something? Like, right. can I help you for well, a second? And it didn't go that way. I actually specifically asked you that day. I was You're like, like, what the fuck am I doing wrong? Yeah. Damn, was, sorry about the F words. Ah, they happen. Yeah, dang it. They do happen. Darn but, it. And, Dang it. Shoot. <laughs> but it was basically like, hey, man, like, yeah, I'll help you. Right. Like, your drift isn't right. Right. Let me help you with your drift. One tiny And it was man. like little correction. It was basically just a min correction, yeah, just and line then- management. And this is what we were talking about earlier before we started doing the podcast. You know, like, Dane and I were talking about line management. Like, a lot of people don't know line management. Right. A lot of people can't catch fish. Because they don't know a good drift. They don't know line management. And right. that's hard. You got to spend years working on line management. Oh, man, it takes forever. Like, you had good line management, but it was just like one correction made a world of a difference right. for you. You were like, hey, I don't need that mend. <laughs> right. That mend was a bad mend. Right. I thought it was a good mend at the time, but it was a bad mend. Right. And then one little correction is like, boom, now you got to get drift. Right. And, it, you know, this is actually a good topic. That's for all, reading water, too. Yeah, right. This is, a, this is a good topic for all the clients out there. I know you're fishing with your guide, and he was telling you to throw a big mend here. Yeah. That doesn't mean throw a big mend everywhere. You know, and we talked about this. Dane and I talked about this. And Bacon, we all talked about this. Where it was like basically like out of a boat. Yeah, we teach you, hey, throw a big mend, you know, big mend in there. Strip, strip. But basically what we're doing is we're manipulating that boat to work with that line. Right. And we're going to move that boat to work that line. Right. And not a lot of people see that. That's a big thing where it's like, we might tell you to throw a big man and then strip that slack in, but we're manipulating that boat so that it works with that man. Right. Because you can't just do that every time. No. You can't just cast out and throw a big man, right. upstream man, and be like, cool, I'm good. Right. I'm going to catch fish. Right. No, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. You have to read a river and throw good men. Right. Yeah. And, you know, and this is an important thing. And I, I don't know if you guys do this as guides either. And I'm sure you do. But, you know, you might guide a client one day on a boat. And then next day he's set free to go fish the gun on oh, his yeah. own. And he's Walkway. like, dude, it just wasn't as good. Yeah, I, I think it's important for people to understand that uh, the boat's going to outrun that mend and correct that mend that you, that's why you put the big mend in. Yeah. And so the boat could, or that's why you did that reach cast. So the boat could correct that. And we're fixing that for you. Right. Uh, when you step in the river, you got to look at the water and see what your line's doing. It's, I think a lot of people just don't know how to read water. Well, it's, I it mean, how long have we been fishing? I know. And I still, there's still certain areas of like, dude, I can't read it well. Right. I can't fish it well. I don't know how. Maybe right. somebody else could. And that's why we tag teamers like, hey, you fish it. Right. Let me see how you mend it. Right. Let me see how you fish it because I might not be doing it right. Maybe you do something better. It's like the, the hardest but coolest part about it is like, if you can read water for the most part, like you can get a good drift. Right. And you can catch fish and it might take a certain drift to do it. And you might be doing a weird drift that you don't, you're like, I never imagined doing that drift. And then all of a sudden it works, but it's basically like everyone like, Oh, dead drift, dead drift, dead drift. It's not all about a dead drift. Nope. It's about reading the water. What's happening underneath what's happening all around you. Right. And that's a hard part for a lot of people to think about. And 
and, and that's also why it's always good to fish with people. Uh, fish with people that are better. Fish with people that are worse. Oh, yeah. People do the darndest things that oh, work, yeah. you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, we've done this before. Yeah. We've fished the same water, and I just had a different take on it, or you just had a different take and on like, it. like, all right, let me fish you now. Right. And that just worked. He's like, yeah. ah. Or you fish you now. Right. And we do that all the time. We're like, hey, you should try it. Right. I and just didn't, I couldn't get a good drift. I didn't out of see it. it or I, yeah, did, I, I didn't, didn't see, see it, that it the way. right way. Right. Or not even the right way. I, that way. I saw it a different way. Right. It doesn't have to be the, there's no right way. No. Could have been a different way. Right. I saw it a different way. And then all of a sudden you fish it and it's like, boom, fish on. And you're like, oh shit. Like, oh, I didn't see it that okay. way. Okay. Now it's starting to make now sense. Now I get it. Like, yeah, there's something I was doing, right. or hey, there was drag in my line, or whatever. Right. Like, or there wasn't drag in my line. Exactly. You know? <laughs> you know, like there's a lot of, like, especially during high water, I fish a lot of drag. Right. I drag my flies a lot because you have to. Right. You don't want to just dead drift and hook bottom all the time. So I drag my yeah. flies all the time. And it's like, dude. Honestly, what it was is like, I was just picking areas and fishing them differently than you were. Right. It was the only reason I was catching more right. fish than you. I mean, some of my most successful techniques are fishing a lot of weight next to banks and just manipulating my flies yeah. over obstacles. Pulling them up right. or putting them down or but still them need, or... But still needing the weight, you know, to be there to the bottom. Um, yeah. And just having to manipulate my flies. It's a weird way to fish, but sometimes it's and really works. I mean, here's a good example. Like a couple weeks ago, I was fishing with Dan and his buddy. And I, I, out of my boat, I was rowing a lot of the time. But when I fished, I was throwing a hopper dropper. I was basically nymphing, but I was throwing a hopper dropper. By the way, I love the quick jerk to burp out of oh yeah i had to get out of the microphone and burp. Ah, it's my favorite uh, make it make it clear you know yeah, also don't, don't stink the mic up for yeah the next exactly guy. jesus <laughs> don't stink that up um but it was like when i fish i was throwing a hopper dropper i mean i was nymphing like my bottom fly was at maybe like three and a half feet right you know like right. from my hopper i knew i wasn't gonna get a hopper take Right. You know, but it was the fact that the only fact of the matter is I was fishing the fishy water. Exactly. And I told the, the dude in the back of the boat who's with us the whole time, awesome fisherman, great guy. Like, I mean, I told him at the end of the day, I go, dude, you can fish. You're a good fisherman. I'd say the only fact of the matter is line management and how you manipulate your flies. Right. That's the only thing I go... You watch me. I got in the front of the boat. I cast one hole, caught one fish immediately. And you just fished that hole. Said so all it was was line management and how I manipulated the flies. So you broke rule number one. <laughs> I'm uh, shaming right now. We don't even need to get into that. I actually, no, we don't. I, I love that podcast. I hope more people listen to that one. I thought that was a good one. About how yeah. to guide and how, oh, yeah. to, how you behave. There's not one right way. No, and I, I got some feedback on that from some different people where it was basically like, ah, oh, dude, you should throw a cast in, man. Right. You know, like, how dare you not? Right. <laughs> right. You know, like, you should. Well, you know, I was actually, this was kind of an interesting parody. Is I was talking to a, a, I was in physical therapy a couple of days ago. I was talking to an elk guy, and, uh, he was talking oh, about, he can't take a shot. So he was talking <laughs> about like, yeah, right. But he was talking about like, yeah, I put these guys in the right place, the right time. Everything's perfect. They miss a shot. I knew they missed a shot. They miss, they knew they missed a shot, and we move on. Yeah. Guiding fish is a whole different story. Oh, it totally is. They could they could have missed twenty fish and had no idea that they had missed those twenty fish. But a good thing is telling them that they did. Right. Right. You know, be like, hey, you missed that. Right. That was a fish. Because. I mean, they have to learn how to fail before they can succeed. Right. That's the whole thing. Like, you got to fail before you succeed, right. you know? As you a guy, you can't be just like, ah, oh, could have been. Oh, man, like, you're doing so good. I can't believe it, man. Right. It's like, no, you missed one. Yeah, at what point oh, you, do you miss that? Yeah, at what point do you blow smoke? And at what point do you, like, tell them? I know, and that's period? hard, dude, where it's like, ah, you got to you gotta know your, you got to stereotype, man. <laughs> you do. You got to profile and be like, oh, I'm going to rip this dude up. <laughs> he just blew it you know oh, he just blew it i'm gonna tell him he blew it you know but you don't do that often it's just like 
hey man oh that was a fish you know like you build your confidence you're like hey you're hooking fish right. like your drift is perfect you're missing fish right like fish are eating right you're doing the hard part the drift is there you just got to get that hook set exactly right you know it's like don't bass it you know <laughs> don't don't pull it out of their mouth right. just pick up uh i don't know i but, mean but to 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 get back to the 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 original topic what, which was what do you do when oh, yeah. someone comes up to you and asks you and by the way uh, we would love to get uh some emails from you guys oh yeah totally tell us email, scenarios email uh, the guided trip at gmail.com yeah. or go on the website the guided trip dot com and email us right. contact email us we know this the, the scenarios are infinite we'd love to hear yours oh yeah and there's tons of them right uh where you did the right thing or you did the wrong thing or you might have thought about it later and like ah maybe i should have done ah, this differently yeah should've. we'd love to hear these stories because these are infinite and they'd be awesome to hear there's from. tons of them and i've done the wrong thing yeah. and i've done the right thing uh, well and we and we'd love to read them out loud to uh to to our here r- I was to our limited Mind listeners. My own. <laughs> here I was roping fish, and some guy just taps me on the back. I just said, "What are you using, Sony?" He scared the <laughs> shit out of me. <laughs> um, I do have a couple things to mention before we end this, and the, again, this is kind of off um, the Meat Eater podcast. All right. But they're entertaining because they do pertain to us. Do we have time for you to talk this through so I can grab um, a beer? Yeah, I'll talk it through. Um, grab me one. Why don't you done? Would you mind? Um, basically on this podcast, we have talked about Copenhagen and we've talked about take and choose and the meat eater podcast, Steve Ranella meat eater podcast has done the same, but I listened to something today that was pretty entertaining to me about, they've been kind of going on and like just taking dips and you know different things to say about it and what it does for hunting but i did hear an interesting story on this steve ranella brought this up um he talks about a story of a an ex-convict that in prison they would get chew copenhagen and they would basically single serve these copenhagens out and sell Copenhagen shoes. Dane and I actually mentioned that, mentioned that. Do you remember? Okay, let me bring this up first. Do you remember like maybe five, six years ago where they used to sell single serve cigarettes? Yeah. Oh, dude, it was the best. Can you tell me where they used to sell them? Power Stop. I'll say it. Power Stop and Gas Cafe. Gas Cafe. Yeah. You'd go buy single cigarettes or it was like uh, 50 cents or a dollar i miss those days where you could buy a single serve cigarette or i think like, it was illegal then they oh just it's it. illegal now uh, i mean uh, no i know it's it illegal was, now it was illegal then yeah. too god i miss but my basically homies. they just open up a pack and yeah. be like here's one cigarette and you give them 50 cents or a dollar right. or whatever for one cigarette right but like, i'm trying to quit they charge you like a side of fries or something that's how yeah. they did it god, and I it was one days. cigarette but dane and i were talking dane scott is who i'm talking about but um we were talking about doing, like, what if they did single serve chews? <laughs> like, could you do a single serve chew? It'd be pretty hard. You know, it'd be gross though. Oh, it, someone had to see, dip their fingers. In here's the, the thing. Yeah. So Steve Ranella was talking about this ex convict. He bird. heard a story about yeah. We talked about chew on this podcast, but he heard a story about this dude who's an ex convict. And it was all sanitation. You know, they were always worried about it where everybody's fingers were. Right. And so they, he, when they go out hunting, this dude was hunting with his ex-convict, apparently. I'm, I don't know the full backstory. This dude would carry around plastic spoons in his pocket. Whenever he'd ask for a chew from somebody, he'd pull out a plastic spoon and he'd put it in the can and dig out a chew with the plastic spoon and then put it in his lip from the plastic spoon. <laughs> when everybody would ask for from him for a chew, he'd hand him a plastic spoon. Single serve dips. Yeah, it's just like Dairy Queen, man. Exactly. What if we did single serve dips? You just hand him a plastic. Yeah, exactly. Like Baskin Robbins. You want a little taster? All right. 
Here's a little taster spoon. What did, I, did I say Dairy Queen? No. Yeah, you did. Yeah, it's just like Baskin Robbins. Yeah. You get your little plastic spoon, yeah, you, you sample your, your rainbow sherbet. Exactly. And then you move on, even Same though you thing, knew like, how your I rainbow I want to try sherbet. the cookie dough, you know? Uh, even you, though you know how they all You taste. go through the line and <laughs> right. you don't even order anything. You're like, that was delicious. Thank you. I'm satisfied. Appreciate it. I'll see it. you later. <laughs> um, that was amazing. Same thing with chew. You could do single serve chews, which is carry a plastic spoon. Because I, I get clients that ask for me for chews. I'm like, I don't know where your hands have been. I don't think that at the time, but it's like, I'm gonna start screwing around with clients. But like, here, dig it out with a spoon. <laughs> I'm gonna get, I'm gonna order some of those Baskin Robbins spoons, those little mini spoons, and be like, here you go. Hey, as long as you like, go home and wash. Single them. serve chews. I got another one about chew. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a couple about chew today. There was some. Um, you're making I don't, me, you're I don't making know me the word. A cigarette is what you're doing. I should have I should have wrote down the word, but same thing on the Steve Ranella Meteor podcast, repping them pretty hard right now. But um, there was an Indian word that was said about somebody who chews tobacco. I can't remember the word. I should have wrote it down. <laughs> Basically, somebody who chews tobacco, they call him the man with two assholes. <laughs> I thought that was pretty hilarious. <laughs> That's brilliant. Somebody is a chewer is the man with two assholes. <laughs> they got shit coming out of their mouth and shit coming out of the other side. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. Uh, but I definitely stole those. Um, I like it nonetheless. But I like the single serve idea. Single serve dip. Single serve dip. Single serve worm dirts. Uh, it just doesn't make sense on a boat. That's the problem. Because you guys have all been touching the same nasty I know. things We've all, all been, day. We're working on a. Um, we're definitely working on design and sticker for Worm Dirt. Oh, God, Hopefully, it's, it's, we're gonna copyright that right now. Copyright Ricky Bobby Inc. There, uh, there you go. <laughs> Little R. Um, <laughs> we're working on a sticker for Worm Dirt, and we're working on some other stickers and some other stuff that's gonna happen here soon. But we'll gi- we'll give you a little taster. Yeah. We'll just say it's uh, just think kosher, <laughs> just uh, think Clausen. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what to tell you. You can do the math there. We can't. <laughs> but we're working on some stuff. Um, Night crawlers. But we definitely are working on a worm dirt sticker. Ah. Uh. It's it's in the works. It's pretty. It's pretty. It's gonna awesome. be good. Yeah. It's we can't be give good. you guys all the information because I'm too afraid that someone's gonna pirate our information. Or yeah, our, we won't our, give you too much. Um, I mean, I already said too much saying worm dirt. Yeah, you but did. Some bitch. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Well, we rambled on enough about. Uh, I mean, do you have anything that you want to add? Like, what's happening? Anything? Not particular, man. I think we covered it. I ain't got shit. I mean, I think we bored our audience plenty. Uh, uh, we either bored them or we excited them. Who knows? I, I would like to radi- reiterate. Uh, sorry for my slur. Reiterate. Reiterate that uh, uh, I would love to re- reiterate. See, that's a hard word to say when you're drunk. Are you drunk? <laughs> I think so. Uh, reiterate. Uh, we would love to get some emails about talking what you do, what you have yeah. done, uh, running into guys on the river, people that have been pushy, do people that are Do you lie? Do you right. tell the truth? Do you give them bugs? Right. What do you do? Right. I would, I mean, I would, we would just scenario. love to hear some stories, and we'll, uh, and we'll bring them up on the next podcast and talk about them. Um, it'd be fun for us and hopefully fun for you. I'm going to give a quick shout-out before we finish this real fast. Um, Justin Rampy sent us an email. Um and he's one of my good buddies, Zach Scott's buddies. I've oh, met okay. him a couple times. But he, he sent us an email about Euro nymphing. Mm. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call him out. We want to have him on the podcast, talk about Euro oh, nymphing. Because absolutely. Because two podcasts ago, maybe three, I think two podcasts ago, we talked about Euro nymphing. Um, apparently, the beginning of the email was, we are idiots. <laughs> and we don't know what we're doing. Because we're bobber, we need a, we need a Euro nymph. Um, so if Justin Rampy would, uh, get a hold of me, we'll come up and we'll do a podcast or he'll come yeah. up. We'll do a podcast. Yeah. He'll be up here this summer. And, and not to harsh um, him man. We just want to, we want to hear about it. Well, I want to do a little research first, yeah. you know, like I read the email and I don't want to explain any of it right now because I'm not, 
I have no idea what I'm talking about. Right. And he had some really good points. So we're calling him out. Justin Rampey, um, come up here. We'll do a podcast. We'll talk about your and thing. We'll uh, light you up how indicators are better. <laughs> <laughs> and we, dude, we, Dane and I even talked about like doing, like how could we do like a competition? But you can't. No, you can't fish the same water twice. You can't, exactly. Like, no, can, I'd fish it first, and, like, I'd catch all the fish, and he'd be like, dude, I don't know what's <laughs> happening. Like, I'm not catching any. But like, I know. Competition is Caught them all with an indicator. I'll tell you right now, there's a time and a place for everything, and I would I, – I'd love to have Rampy on. Just to – just I, I want to hear the techniques, uh, something I don't know much about. I'd love to yep. learn a little bit. Um, we'll make and, it happen. And if you're in town, man, I would love for you to take me to school. I would love to learn. Oh, that. well, I, I mean, I my buddy Zach Scott, um, who I grew up with and fished with a bunch, um, he'll be up here this summer, and we'll, we'll have him bring Justin up, and we'll get him on the podcast and talk about it. Yeah, let's get weird with – Let's, yeah, get let's get weird with weird. your name print, man. That'd um, be fun. Yeah, no, that'd be fun to figure it out. I'd love to fish with them, too, and, like, see. I'd like – I mean, I have no idea. We're all about getting taken to school here because we – So, uh, I'd like to learn, and, yeah, if he wants to take me to school a little bit, let's do it. Call him out. Hell, yeah. Please. Please do come on. We'd love it. We'd love to have you. Um. Yeah, that's about all I got. I think that's uh, – I mean, we rambled for a while – um thanks for listening guys this is the guided trip podcast don't forget um ryan mcveigh is professional now <laughs> <laughs> and uh southwest fly fishing magazine um you can find us the guided trip on instagram the guided trip at gmail.com hit us up let us know anything and uh we enjoy it. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah, listen in if you want to make it like I did. Yeah, exactly. If you want to be as good as Ryan, <laughs> you got to listen to this goddamn podcast already. <laughs> Jesus Christ, everybody. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. Bye.